Welcome to the Total Boss Podcast, and I'm your host, Cristiano Green, a podcast where we talk about finding fulfillment through self-development, being a leader of your own life, and getting the most out of it as well. Tenacity, originality, talent, authenticity, and being legendary. It's all about living your best life. I'm your host, Cristiano Green, and I'm a mindset and relationship coach for gay men. And this week on the podcast, I really want to talk about a topic that I know, you know, sometimes it feels like we might have been, you know, knocked out with, or, you know, we talk about it too much, but there's also a lot of us who don't share and talk about our experiences with mental health. So today we want to talk about, you know, mental health in general in our community, but also talk about a bit about my own journey with mental health um, issues, especially, you know, anxiety and depression, right? Because those are prevalent within our community. So kind of let's talk about some of the numbers. So when it comes to all mental health numbers, gay men are two to three times more likely to deal with all of them. So that's hugely, hugely, hugely different to what it is the, the general population. So let's kind of talk about, say, depression. 50% of gay men will suffer from depression. 60% of gay men will suffer from some form of anxiety. Usually it's something like social anxiety, right? Because, you know, growing up, we could have been bullied, we could have been struggling to make friendships, struggling with ourselves. And so when we deal with that stuff, it can lead into other, other things like anxiety as well. Now, you know, over 40% of gay men will get bullied at some point in their life, whether that's in school, whether that is at home, whether that is in another social setting, could be, you know, religions, uh, things like that, or it could be even in the, in the workplace. So, you know, we deal with a lot more um, bullying, which can lead to higher increased rates of, you know, uh, depression, anxiety, uh, loneliness, right? Now, over 70% of gay men will suffer from loneliness. So that's a huge, huge number, right? Seven out of 10 gay men will suffer from loneliness at some point in their life. And, you know, when it comes down to what those things can do for you, we talk about, say, addictions and substance abuse. Now, one in three gay men will suffer from an addiction or substance abuse. Now, what do we talk about substance abuse? We're talking about alcohol. We're talking about all types of, you know, party drugs. We're talking about prescription medications, things like that. Those are things that people, you know, get abuse, you know, abuse for, for, for whatever reason. Right? Alcohol might be for, you know, you, you know to, to, to numb yourself, right? Same with drugs. It could be to, to try to change your state, your mental state. And, you know, prescription medications might be to, 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 to mask pain or might be to even manage depression or anxiety, right? Those are the things that people kind of get on those kinds of medications for. So when we look at all of those things there, medi- you know, mental health in our, in our community it, 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 it is an epidemic, what is what I would call it, and it's something that we need to address. Now, when I talk about my own journey of, of it, I suffered from depression and anxiety for a huge portion of my life. Now, growing up as a young gay man, hiding away in the closet, you know, where I grew up, it was definitely not acceptable for you to be gay. There was no openly gay people out there, and you know, anyone that I knew at school that kind of came across as gay would have got beaten up or picked on and bullied. And I, I was one of those people. I got, I got uh, you know, severely bullied every day of my school life for the whole time I was there, to the point where I don't even remember learning anything at school, to the point where you know, I didn't have any friends, to the point where I completely isolated myself away from everyone. And so I would isolate myself in my room, dealing with the depression, just kind of like, feeling like, you know, is life gonna be like this forever? To the point where I even had suicidal thoughts, you know? And so those kinds of things manifested into also social anxiety. So, you know, going out in public, I couldn't even go out to, to, to the shops or to the doctors on my own. I was like 20 years old, and I remember calling my mum to say, I need you to take me to the doctors, because I couldn't go on my own, because I, couldn't, I, I, felt, I felt anxiety about sitting in the you know the, the the waiting room for for the doctor to call me because you know who knows what, what someone could have said or would have done to me and made me feel uncomfortable so i had you know severe anxiety around around people as well so for me you know that led to suicidal thoughts which again for a lot of gay men it does as well because one in ten gay men will either think about it or go ahead with it or actually you know you know 
suicide will take their life as well, right? So these numbers, like I said, can lead to those, uh, those areas as well. So for me, you know, I had to really work hard to be able to overcome, you know, the initial hurdle, especially when I'm coming out, because we all know how difficult the coming out experience is for, for, for us as gay men. And so for me, dealing with that, you know, dealt with a lot of depression, dealt with a lot of anxiety, and I finally was allowing myself to go out to, 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 to gay venues because I felt safer there. That was when I first started to, like I said, immerse myself into that world. Got caught up into alcohol, got caught up into drugs, and they were the ways that I dealt with my anxiety and my um, depression, right? If I was drinking, then my anxiety, social anxiety were gone. I could be the best person to, to, to talk to and meet because I was bubblish, you know, and we all know what, what, what uh, alcohol does as a lubricant for our um, confidence, right? That's what we call it, confidence, liquid confidence. Same with other alcohol, sorry, um, other drugs like, you know, pills or GHB, right? Sometimes even meth, right? They all made my inhibitions go down and my personality go to 100. And I felt like this was who I was. And because I was doing them so often, I honestly did think that who I, that was who I was. So I, for, for, for a long period of time, you know, I never really dealt with the social anxiety part of it. I dealt with anxiety at home, especially on the come downs of, of everything, but I didn't, you know, at that time didn't necessarily put it towards being social anxiety because I was out, I was being social, right? And like I said, every time I was out being social, there was drinks in my hand. And then oftentimes, like I said, also uh, drugs as well, because that was, you know, how I lived my life for 10, 15 years, right? That was kind of the world that I fell into. And same, what would happen is, is you and I would be out partying, whenever I would go home on my own, that's when the loneliness would sit in. That's when the depression would kick in as well. Because I never found someone. I never found a relationship. I would only ever, you know, have random hookups with people. I always felt used. I always felt that people only ever wanted me for, for sex. Um, and so I never opened myself up to really connect to other guys. Because again, so many other gay men were struggling with what I was struggling with. And we were going through the same kind of cycle. Feeling that way. Pushing people away when anyone would come close. But, but really longing for someone to really break down our walls as well. So I'd go through that big cycle for 10, 15 years, feeling depressed, going out, shifting that there, drinking, drugs, blah, 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 cycle, 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 every single week, which is something that so many of us go through, right? We party, 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 to the point where, you know, we feel like we've, we're, you know, we had the best time and we did, but then the come down comes back to reality and we get knocked back into reality and depression and anxiety will kick, kick back in, which is what happened for me. And so for me, what I really had to work hard on was like dealing with some of the issues that I kind of avoided. So yes, I came out and I, yes, I identified myself as gay and yes, I, you know, I overcame that part of it, but I didn't necessarily address the, 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 the years and years and years of bullying what that did for my self-worth, what that did for my confidence, what that did for my beliefs about who I was. Because I was told that I was a faggot every day. I was called that I was a loser every day. I was pushed downstairs, you know, I had my hair pulled. I had like people throwing stuff at me. Like all of those things that, you know, you can imagine someone would do that like just makes you feel like an absolute piece of shit, right? And so I never worked on any of those things. So yes, I could mask it and numb it and avoid it for certain amounts of time, but they would always come back. And I was always just having rock bottom moments, relying on alcohol, relying on drugs. So, you know, I used to think that I was an alcoholic, but I realized that I was just, you know, a, a substance abuser. I would abuse everything to try to avoid any sort of feelings that were negative and try to enhance any sorts of feelings that could be positive. I tried to want to live, live in this happy bubble. I did that for many, many, many years. And if you were an outsider looking in, you would have thought I was probably one of the happiest people because that's the kind of version that I showed for everybody else. It, you know, we all know kind of, you know, we're, we're, we're multifaceted. We, we show people different sides of ourselves. And the side that I wanted to show everybody out there was I was happy, I was fun, I was kind, I was a good friend, uh, I, was, uh, I was a good time. That's what I wanted to show, right? But deep down, like I said, there were so many times when I would get absolutely shit-faced and take too much, you know, alcohol and drugs that it would go opposite and I would get really dark and I would get really depressed and maybe I would take out my, my hurt and my pain and my anger on people around me. And I hurt other people around me, right? 
but oftentimes I never remembered those experiences because I was so far gone. And so when you don't remember those things, you don't really realize where you've gone to and you try to avoid it, especially if you're, if you're not ready to deal with the problem, you push it aside. I know I did, I pushed it aside so many times. You know, when people would share with me that their, 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 you know, their perspective on my alcohol and drugs, I, I, I like I would either push them away or I'd get in a fight with them, right? Because I'd be like, who? Are you? Like, don't tell me you, you can't talk to me about you, about drinking, honey, because you know you've got a problem as well. So you know, it'd be one of those things where you like, you know, I, I would always put down an excuse or come up with something because you know I wasn't ready to deal with that yet. I wasn't ready to go into the the, the trauma and, and absolutely handle all, all of those years of shit that I went through. But like I said, for me to actually fully get to a place where I was healed and I was able to grow and I was able to then now help hundreds of other gay men who deal with these kinds of things, you know, to deal with mental health stuff, to overcome their depression, to overcome their anxiety, to find happiness, to, 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 to actually find self-love, self-worth, self-confidence within themselves so they can find someone in, to have a relationship with, so they can, you know, find a better career, so they can have improved their relationships, you know, all of those different areas which I helped so many people with because I did it for myself, you know, I had to do that because I was one, ready to say I need some help from somebody else. I thought I had to do everything on my own for so, 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 so long. And I, 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 and I struggled, like I said, getting anyone that, that to, getting support and asking for support because I didn't want to show anybody that I, I needed it. I had to have, I had to be strong, I had to be the toughest. And when we have to be the strong and the toughest, we don't allow other people in to support us and help us, even though probably so many people want to because we're probably the kinds of people that help and support everybody else, right? But we have to be able to let people in to do that. So that was the first step. I had to let people in and say, I need help. Two, you know, I had to trust in myself to say that I could, I could get over these things, that I was gonna be able to make the changes and I was gonna be able to get better. I, did, I had to believe that, you know, I wasn't, gonna, I wasn't so fucked up that it couldn't happen. Right, because if I believed that it was I was so effed up that I, I I couldn't change, I couldn't get better, then I wasn't going to do any of the work required to be able to do that. So right, so I had to find, you know, ask for help, find the right people, trust myself that in doing this I was going to get better. So the first thing I had to do was I had to get clean. I had to get cleaner for the alcohol and drugs, and I did that. And it was hard and difficult, but you know it was the most rewarding thing because every day that I said no to it, I got stronger. My self-worth got stronger, my self-belief got stronger, and you know, I started to realize a lot of things. Because when you have a clear mind for a longer period of time, you start to realize all of the ways that you were fucked up in the past. <laughs> now, that is something that you know you cannot buy. You know, you can't put that into a glass potion and drink and, and just give yourself that self-awareness. But being clear-headed and clear-minded for a long period of time allowed me to be self-aware to really realize where I was going wrong and where the, the flaws were in my personality and in my life and in my behaviors and actions. And choices as well, right? Because we've got actions, we've got um, beliefs, we've got choices and then decisions. That's the ABC method. And I'll talk about that in, a, in another pod podcast because I believe that's important as well. Um, but yeah, so I had, to, I had to, 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 to get myself clean. That was the first step. Then after that, it was like, start to really evaluate where, where like I said, from that self-awareness, where were the areas that I really needed support in? One, it was the, you know, I was dealing with, like I said, depression and anxiety. That was just what was coming through, especially when I was clean and sober. That was uh, clear as mud, but that was something that was still lingering on um, for me. The next was is that, you know, I was really struggling because I really wanted to find a relationship. I, the, the fact that, you know, I'd never had a relationship, I was 34 years old, really hurt me inside because I felt like an absolute loser, right? Because no one loved me, I felt unlovable. So that was something else as well. Then it was, I was really, you know, I was in, I was in a high position in, in, in my career. I was, you know, running a team of 300 people, you know, high six figure salary, but I just wasn't happy there. I wasn't feeling fulfilled. So again, it was, you know, getting out of a position where I felt stuck in my life as well in a career choice because everyone was expecting so much from me, but I, you know, I, I wanted something else. And then finally it was, you know, really coming to terms with, myself and what I like how I want to support and, and, and help other people right but it was first I had to give that to myself so dealing with that I had to really work hard on like I said understanding myself working through a lot of the processes and, and like I said I got a lot of different coaching from a lot of world gurus you know you've got Tony Robbins you've got Brendan Bashar you've got Grant Cardone you've got Mel Robbins all these other people out there. there's many more that I should, should, should be naming but you know 
I'm not going to rattle off every name in the book, but those are some of the big ones that really supported me and helped me on the path. I did all those people's courses, online online courses, I went to their seminars, I did things over there, stuff, and I really learned and understand some stuff. And then I did some deeper work by understanding that, you know, I was ready to step into and become a coach, and that's what I've been doing, obviously, for the last almost four years now, which is fantastic, and I love, 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 love what I get to do. Um, but because of that, I have to learn more skills. And I did some stuff which is, you know, which is NLP, which is Neuro Linguistics Programming. And there are so many deep techniques, because now I'm a master NLP, I've done my masters five times over, which is fantastic. I also help support people through different training organizations and help other people become better at NLP, because how much I believe in NLP. But there were some, um, some techniques in there, which was, you know, we, we talk about timeline therapy, we call um, the one day personal breakthrough, we've got pain paradigm, we've got the parts integration. There's so many different techniques that I had to go through, to, like I had to go through as a client to then also learn how to do them and become a master and teach those things as well. And this is, these are some of the things that I did and do to help my clients to get over their mental health stuff. So a lot of this stuff helped me to let go of old negative trauma that was stored in the body, right? So we talk about anger, we talk about sadness, we talk about fear, hurt, guilt, shame, regret, um, uh, we've got doubt, we've got rejection, judgments, all of those ones there and many more that we deal with and we hold on to in our body, right? And the, the way that our body works this way uh, neurologically is that when we have um, emotions that are stored in the body, they store up in certain places in our body. So we might have certain parts of our body that we have, you know, anger held up in our body. And we might have sadness in another part, we might have hurt in another part, and we might have fear in another part, right? But when we can actually go through and do the process to release these emotions from our body, then what happens is our actual body and our neural pathways shift and change. So when we can then, like I said, change the, the, our neural pathways, then we can change our physical body. Then when our physical body can change, we can change our emotional states. Then we can change our emotional states, we can change the actual energetic vibration that we have in our body. And that's when we start to see real changes in our life, like I said. So after I was able to do this, it was only within six months I was able to quit my job and go full time into my coaching business. Then a few months later, I was able to move over to Bali, Indonesia, to a place where I could be more spiritual and be more aligned to who I really feel like I am. I able to get away from the party life and sitting to step into a more peaceful, you know, spiritual life. Then, you know, a few months later, I was able to find my uh, a relationship, you know, my first real relationship, and, and, and now in a relationship that I've been in for over two years with a man that I love so, 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 so much. So, like I said, those are some small things that have shifted because I did some of the work within my body to release that stuff out, and then, like I said, no longer deal with it, uh, depression. Rarely ever deal with any anxiety, and if I do, it's there for just a moment, and I understand it, and I can move on from it, right? So, dealing with that stuff there, the loneliness is gone, because I also know myself better. And I don't need a lot of people. I used to be someone who needed to be out and about and around people all the time because I would be, uh, you know, the worst when I was on my own. But now I love my own space. I spend the majority of my day on my own in between working and doing my own thing. Like, you know, I spend so much time, quality time on my own. So those are some of the things that I do as well. So again, kind of what I'm really trying to share here is that I know there are, there are people out there who are listening who are dealing with depression, anxiety, loneliness, um, you know, addiction, substance abuse, all of the different areas out there. Just want you to know that I've been through almost all of them myself. I've been through the bullying. I've been through the rejections. I've been through feeling unlovable. And what I can tell you is that there is always light at the other side of the tunnel. Like I said, the, the things that I needed to realize was that you needed to be ready to, 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 to make some changes. You need to be ready to ask for help. You need to believe that if you do the work that you will be able to make those changes in your life. And you also need to know that, like I said, if you find the right people, you follow the, the, the strategies, and then you will, you will get what you need to do. So again, I've, I've, I've released, just released a brand new ebook, a free ebook that I'm gonna link in the comments below. If you're someone who's interested in it, it's literally called The Gay Man's Guide to Beating at Depression and Anxiety. It's a free ebook that you can download. For anyone who's listening here, I want you to know that I, I love to give out free resources to people out there. So if you're someone who's listening to the podcast, you think this is something that, you know, a topic that you want to, 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 to learn more about, 
I'm gonna link below so you can download that free ebook for yourself and just get some great value. And then maybe this will be the first step on your journey to overcoming depression and anxiety in your own life as well. All right then, you know, that, that's uh, as much time as we have for today. So uh, as always, if you've got some questions, if you've got some shares, if you've got some comments, leave them below or reach out to me privately on social media. You know I'm where I'm at, I'm on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, all of the places. Um, where and, 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 and yeah, well, you, you reach out to me, ask me anything, uh, especially around this topic of, of mental health, because I believe it's an important one. And I wanna leave with one final question. Are you okay? How are you really, really feeling? If you wanna answer that question for yourself in your head and share with me, then I'd be honored to, 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 to keep the conversation going there. And I will be here next week again with a brand new episode of the Total Boss Podcast. Until then, always remember that you've got this and I've got you.